All right, today we're going to be looking at lessons 2.1 and 2.2. Uh, these are both short lessons, so uh, they should both be able to be finished during this class period. 2.1 talks a little bit about the computer history. We've got a few short videos right here. Be sure and watch the videos when you get to the lesson. Then they've got kind of a summary of the videos down here. And, you know, it talks about Babbage in 1821. Uh, he's kind of credited with making the first computer. Uh, and the reason computers are called computers is because they were used for computations. They computed things, added, subtracted. And they became more popular in the U.S. when uh, they were trying to figure out a way to compute the census. Because uh, by the time they added up all the numbers, it was time for the next census. And so the information was out of date by the time they got the computations done. All right, then you'll take the practice quiz. That's not for a grade, that's just to see what you know. All right, and now we're in 2.2. All right, we've got these videos. Now we're starting to get into the actual computations where we're adding, subtracting, uh, multiplying, dividing. And then displaying the answer. All right, so in these videos, they're going to show you how to do the computations. Down here, you've got a place where you can kind of practice those computations. So uh, you could type in something like, well, let's use A and B. Let's say A equals 22. We can say B equals 15. And if you wanted to get fancy here, you could do an input where you input the numbers and have A equals, and you could have integer input, input a number. Um, but right now we just want to look and practice computations. All right. So then I'm going to type, whoops, print, and I can say A plus B. Run the code and I get 37. Uh, we can try multiplying. Print A times B. 330. Now, one thing that's a little bit different in Python than in most other languages, if you're raising to a power, um, let's say, we want to print, and I'd say A. Now, most languages use that up caret over the 6 to raise to a power. In Python, we actually use double multiplication. So I could say A squared. Okay, so 37 times 37 is 484. And then we can try something like print A plus B, say, times A, 352. Okay, so this is just an area for you to kind of practice uh, what you're watching the videos, you can pause the videos, um, put those in so that you're familiar with them. So then when you get to the lesson, uh, you won't have any problems with it. Then they've got example code down here. Uh, again, they talk about how we can't add an integer to a string or a floating number to a string. You've got a short ear sketch connection here. All right, so in lesson 2.2, again, you have the pretest. 
All right, now the instructions on 2.2, the code practice question one. Ask the user to enter an integer, print out the next three consecutive numbers. All right, I'm not going to do this for you, but I'll do something uh, kind of similar. All right, so anytime we have an input, remember we have to have a variable. Okay, we can call it whatever we want. Um, well, I don't want to call it integer, so I'll just call it num. All right, so my variable equals. Now we want this to be a number. We want it to be an integer. And in the videos, if you watch the videos, you have floating uh, decimals or integers. This one, they're asking for an integer. I'm going to say integer. Then we've got parentheses. Input. Then we have to use parentheses again and quotation marks because we're putting words in there. Um, they want to say enter and integer. And then I put a space after that just so the integer doesn't come up right next to that. All right, so instead of doing the next four integers or three integers in a row, I'm going to have it count up by, let's say, two. So if they enter an even integer, it'll be the next three even numbers. If they enter an odd integer, it'll be the next three odd numbers. Okay. So I'm going to print. All right now, thinking back to your math classes, to algebra, how would we get to the next odd integer? If they put in five, then we want the next one to be seven. So we just add two. So say plus two. Now I'm gonna run the code, make sure that it's working so far. Enter an integer, I'll say six, it gives us eight. Now I'm kind of lazy, so I'm going to copy that. And I want to change these. Now to get to the next one, if, if I just leave it like that, if I say, oh, the number plus two and plus two, and I'm adding two each time, um, let's say I enter 10, it's just going to give me 12. So it doesn't actually go up two each time. It goes up to the first one. So to get the next one, I need to change that to four. I'm going to change that to 6. Now if I run code, so I put in 5, I get 7, 9, 11. Okay. So for your uh, lesson, they want you to do the next three integers in a row. All right. So today's lesson, we're doing... Uh, Lesson 2.1 and 2.2. Right. Now, write a program that accepts three decimal numbers as inputs and outputs their sum. Now, the difference in this one, and I'll go ahead and write the first line of code for you, uh, but it covers it pretty well in the videos if you watch the videos. If not, go back, watch the videos, look at the sample code. Again, if we're looking for an input, we have to have a variable. Um, and it's asking for three uh, decimal inputs. So I'm going to have num1, num2, num3. You can call them whatever you like. Dog, cat, horse. Doesn't matter. All right. So equals. Now instead of integer, because an integer will not accept a decimal. Now we call it float. That's a floating decimal. Then we have input and quotation marks. Oops, let's say 
enter a number with a oops, decimal. And I'll put a period at the end of that. Okay. So you'll do that three times, and then your output will be print num1 plus num2 plus num3. Okay. Uh, if you have any questions, just send me an email, and I will respond as quickly as possible.